Hey guys, welcome to another video. It's been a while. It's been a long time ever since I have picked up the camera and vlogged, but um, I just wanted to let you guys know that, you know, I've been busy and uh, life, life is definitely being life. Um, so today's video is gonna be about, actually recently just got a new car, a new daily. Um, some of you guys that are following me on Instagram already know what car I've 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 uh, decided to go with as my daily and it is a really reliable daily and it's something that I wanted to keep long term yeah I can't wait to show you guys now I'm gonna show you guys a little sneak peek in a bit it's not it's not German at all it's not German at all so it's a completely different um, platform you know and I wanted it something unique in that aspect so Hope you guys like it it's it's gonna be a fun one to to build as a daily too so i definitely have some plans for it and i'm um, already do i'm planning to install something today for it at least half of it um i've got out the first mod for the car about one or two weeks ago it's gonna look cool it's gonna look really nice so here's the car guys let me know what you guys think of it thanks guys here she is guys yeah so here's my new 2024 Mazda 3 hatchback, turbo premium plus. This is definitely gonna be a fun daily slash build to work on for the next couple of months and in the incoming years. They do have a platform for this and I've been following a few, few accounts on, or looking at a few accounts on Instagram. It's, it's definitely gonna be a cool, fun little thing. The reason why I have the um, wheels turned over is because I'm actually, the first mod I'm gonna go with is mud flaps from Rally Armor. That's what I decided to go with first. And then, you know, I already have um, another mod I actually bought for it that goes with the mud flaps are the lowering springs. Cause right now it's looking very monster trucky, if you ask me. I mean, look at that wheel gap. That's how much fingers I can fit five in the back, four in the front. So the Turbo Premium Plus comes with the, came with the uh, top spoiler in gloss black. And then it also came with the front lip too, which is great. It looks pretty aggressive. And here's the interior. very clean i decided to go with the red leather interior it's just a whole different vibe you know i mean i've always wanted a red on in in the m2 i didn't really mind it during the time but now looking back at it and looking at a few f82s um that have red interior um seats and i just i just fell in love with red and i you know for this car it had to be red it's super nice super clean i just love red red leather man there she is i haven't even removed the adhesive covers that came from the dealership themselves or whatever you want to call them i already bought these cf overlays that cover the white parts right there in the center where the shift knob is and then also cf overlays for the um, this vicinity right here as well as this and then as well as uh, that on the other side the driver's side and then for the rear too Right here for the rear We got CF overlays for that um, These interior pieces are known to Get scratched really easily over time Well, not even over time in like a couple weeks apparently so Need to get that covered so it doesn't get scratched and bother me. Super clean. I did get screen protectors for the infotainment screen and then as well as the gauge cluster too. Because those are known. The gauge cluster is known to be easily scratched as well. So I'm going to get that um, situated by protecting it. I'm just waiting for the pieces to come through the mail. I believe I got them on eBay. I think we'll just do the front the front mud flaps for today. I think I'm gonna do the rear mud flaps 
and another uh, it's another day when I'm more free. I got stuff to do today, and I got night class at um, my trade school. So we'll see if we can knock out the front today. I'm sure we can. It's pretty easy. All right, guys. So <clears throat> I'm gonna install the first mud flap on the front side. It should be fairly simple. The front is easier than the back. They do provide you directions for it. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick install. Um, I'll try my best to do a quick step-by-step, -step, but I'm not gonna put a lot of effort into explaining. Just for time's sake, I'll try my best to do a step-by-step -step for you guys. So they provide you with everything. Washers, specific screws you need. There's three different screws. Um, for the front, you just need two. There's a thin screw that I think you need for the rear uh, mud flaps. So here is the mud flap from Rally Armor. And they give you a bracket for each mud flap. They didn't provide the pry tool for the install, but it's okay. I have one. First step is to remove these two fasteners. I'll remove them right now. So I just removed the fasteners. So they provide you two, U, uh, two clips. One is a U-clip, which is this one this one and the other is a poly clip so the u clip i believe goes on the very top you're gonna have to pry this back and then the poly clip goes on the bottom so i'm gonna do that right now i'm just gonna put, mount these on and then move on to the um bracket I don't know if you guys can see that there push it a little bit more forward it's hard to do this with one hand, but there's the first U-clip on. And then the second one, the poly clip goes down there. And that's how the poly clip goes. That one's a little bit, you gotta put a little force into that one, but that's how it goes and it mounts. So here's the bracket for the mud flap. So, this bracket you're gonna have to you have to bend forward and then this bottom part right here you have to bend backwards because uh, it does bend that way for the top part then the bottom part of the bracket bends forward or backwards i'm sorry backwards so the bottom area you bend back and then this top area i just bent it a little bit forward fits the liner just like that it's a little mock-up the logo rally armor is, is going to be facing the the back and then the bracket so logo in the back and then the bracket goes on the logo side and it goes on like this like that we're going to use two washers for this and the bottom one right there and then two different screws for these center parts right here, these center holes, the two center holes. And obviously washers too for each hole. I'm just gonna do it really quick and just show you guys it when it's finished. And then I'll just knock out the other side too, off camera. So I was able to get the first one on. So the two nuts go on the very top, bottom, and then the screws, the medium screw, yeah, the medium screw goes in on the top. And then the longer screw goes on the bottom with washers. That's basically it. I'm gonna knock out the other side right now and get it over with. All right guys, so it's the next day. I removed the one of the rear wheels to get easier access into installing this, uh, the rear mud flaps. So yeah, I went ahead and removed this uh, fastener, which belonged right there as well as this one, which belonged right here, and then a screw, which belonged right there. So um, I'm gonna remove, which should just come off. So I'll do that. I also forgot to mention that um, there was actually two more um, screws that you gotta unscrew under uh, and that's, those are them right there. So you're gonna have to remove those as well. So I got, was able to get the rear fender liner out. Now the directions are asking me 
drill a hole here at the crosshair. Um, I'm gonna start off with a small drill bit first and then move up to the direction, say, to move up to a fourth of an inch drill bit. So that's what I'm gonna do for this one. And then for the second drill that we need to puncture through is on this one, so below the two tabs on top is this one. And they're asking to do it from 10 millimeters from the edge. So I'm gonna measure that and then do the same thing I'm gonna do for the crosshair on this one. All right guys, so I um, made the holes bigger to about one fourth of an inch at the designated areas. And then now I'm gonna mount these orange clips onto here. I believe one goes right here and then the other goes on this hole. So I'm gonna do that and then move forward with it. So I was able to get the orange clips on. Now I'm gonna put the rear fender liner on back to the car. You're gonna have to be careful because when you, when you do install these back, you don't wanna have these shift um, out of place because you need them in place. So I'm gonna put the um, rear fender liner back and uh, move forward with the process. So I was able to get the fender liner in. I lined up the holes with the holes that I drilled with the 1 4th inch bit. Now I'm going to put back the fasteners that I took off previously. And then um, I'm going to start bending the bracket. So I bent the bottom part. It's gonna go like this. I bent this bottom part just a little bit, just a tad bit. You don't need to bend it as much as the front ones. I'm gonna mount this bracket on and then the same thing as the front. Use washers and the two thin screws that they provide to you. I'm just gonna do it really quick and uh, show you the end result. So my dog really wants me to play uh, fetch with her. <laughs> Coney. So the two nuts go here and then the screws with the, with the washers go here. Really simple, and remember always to have the logo pointing to the back. Looks pretty, pretty sick already. Looks pretty sick if you ask me. Look at that, look at that dog. So I'm just gonna knock out the other side really quick and um, um, show you the finishing, the finishing look. Kona. Here is the final look, guys. The mud flaps are pretty big. The rear ones are pretty big. They almost touch the floor. So I can't even imagine how low the lowering springs will make the rally armor rear mud flaps touch close to the ground. <laughs> if they're too long, you know, and then I'll just end up taking them off. But I, I, I like them. I like the mud flap look. Kind of reminds me of a Subi, you know? The rear install took me a bit longer, but it was worth it. I mean, it just goes too hard. <laughs> and now I think next is lowering springs, and then I think I might do tint at the same time. Um, there's this shop. I actually took my dad's Model 3 to to get his lowering springs installed that I bought for him during Christmas or during his birthday. Yeah, no, during his birthday, I bought him Lori Springs. They were Eibach. And also got him to, I believe, 10 or 15 millimeter spacers. But they're not too super low. They're not that low. So that's why I went with the Eibach for his long range. Yeah, I can't wait to put iBox springs on this. The M2 comp also does have iBox springs, but the iBox lowering springs are way lower um, for the M2 comp, but hell yeah. Hey 
guys, so that's it for the, today's video. The mud flaps look sick. I'm glad that the install was really easy and it was pretty straightforward. I hope this video can help you guys if you guys are installing the rally armor and mud flaps. But I just wanted to show you how it is step by step and just, you know, vlog it because I haven't been vlogging and, and I'm glad, definitely glad to be back. So I definitely will release more content, I'm trying to and definitely get, keep you guys updated on the Mazda, the new Mazda 3 hatchback. Solid car overall. Along the months of this year, the New Year's already hit. I know I've been kind of lagging on posting on YouTube and stuff like that, but um, the New Year's already hit. And along this year, uh, the beginning of this year, I'll let you know, I'm gonna be daily driving this a lot. So I'll let you guys know how it feels and just the overall, uh, over the months, weeks, months, how the, the car, is as a platform in, it, in itself so a little toy to build and daily to have so i'll see you guys in the next video peace